Welcome to Terra at Home with your host, Chris Moretti. Good morning and welcome to Terra at Home. On today's very special Victoria Day weekend edition, we're starting off by giving you an inside look at Terra Waterdown's production facility, and I'm joined by Amy Don Monado, the Regional Greenhouse Manager. Thanks for being with us, Amy. Thanks for having me. We always turn to you when we're talking about the best when it comes to flowers, <laughs> and uh, today, for something a little bit different, we're inside uh, the production facility in Terra Waterdown. Yes. It's kind of an amazing facility. Tell us a, a little bit about the crop we've got going on here. It's sure. Victoria Day weekend. There's Lots of uh, ambition to plant now, and there's there so is, much yeah. to look forward to this season. It is the weekend, and it doesn't get more locally grown than here at Terra. We grow a lot of our plant material right here on our water down site. Um, Terra production is um, basically our annual crop, so we're growing all of our annual plant material within here. Um, it's a huge facility. It's all automated, automatic watering systems, flood floors, recycled watering program, etc. So we've got product staged at um, different stages so that we have color from January 1st right through May long weekend and through to Christmas. So That's amazing and it's something that you don't find often. Um, this is the big weekend and this is, is when yeah. everything's flooded with color but here we do it a little bit different where we we've, got, yeah. we've got stuff coming on and in different phases yeah. so we'll be able to supply uh, what our customers want all exactly. season. Yeah, we have diff different stages that we set everything at. So at any point in time, you can come in and you can see something from a tiny cutting all the way to a finished product. So That's yeah. pretty exciting. It is. We're standing in front of uh, some of our Terra geraniums here, and yeah. they provide a really powerful, colorful punch. Yes. Um, but they're only one example of the many, many plants being grown here. Mm -hmm. uh, give us a bit of a rundown. What are some of the varieties that you're cool. most excited about? Um, well, Terra geraniums are definitely one of the big ones for us because we're, we're known for them. We, we carry one of the best varieties of geraniums, biggest flowers and so on. Um, but we, ha we carry a few other really great ones. The non-stop begonias with the gigantic flowers. We've got New Guinea impatiens that are really bright colors and so on. There's a few really neat ones we're doing this year. Um, Sinetti is one of them. It's actually in our Terra at Home magazine. Um, it's um, just a new really bright color. It's a blue flower. It's a true blue flower, so mm. it really excites people. Bright blue and bright pink. Um, that's something really great. Different grasses and so on that we're doing this year. There's some really nice combinations and monochromatic colors this year. So a lot of hanging baskets and planters that are all the same color. So you get your big punch of yellow or you get your big punch of orange and we carry it right through from the matching hanging basket right down to your planters. So that's really exciting. So you can actually coordinate your look using mm -hmm. the same mix in your planter as you do in your hanging basket. And then that allows you to carry that color scheme into your garden as well. Yeah, yeah. that's what we're seeing um, in our stores right now is we've got the patio furniture with the matching umbrellas and the matching cushions. And we've taken it to the next step and we've actually, we have yellow planters, for instance, with yellow flowers and then more pink with pink flowers and so on. So you really get that punch, especially from the road. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So. Um, something that Tara does really well here is bigger. Yes. Bigger annuals, bigger pots, bigger planters, bigger sizes. How is that? How does that help the customer? Why do we want bigger? Well, if you're like me, it's the instant gratification thing. So if you're planting bigger, you've got an established plant that's got a good root system on it. So when you plant it in the ground, it's going to set its roots a lot quicker, be a lot more tolerant to the transition to the ground, yeah. and you get that punch of color a lot faster, right? So when people are standing back from the road, they see that instantly. They all want what you have. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> For those people undertaking some planting projects with annuals, which are, of course, sort of the icing on the cake of the garden. Mm -hmm. um, they provide the great color, like you said, that street yeah. impact for, yeah. for curb appeal. For those who are starting to plant a color scheme this season, what advice would you give them for general care and planting? Well, first you have to figure out the location you're planting in. A lot of people um, have to take time and figure out, do they have full sun, do they have part shade, etc. Um, and once you've figured out the amount of sunlight you have, then you start picking your plant material. Right. And I always say, pick a color you like and let's go from there. So when I'm helping somebody in a store, I might say, you know, what's your favorite color? What color would complement your house? What do you want to see? And they usually give you a starting point and we pick a color and, you know, we decide you want it tall or short as a border, you know, what's the purpose of your garden? Mm -hmm. And once you determine those things, then you sort of work from there. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, 
fertilization, watering, all that kind of stuff. What what sort of things should we, what steps should we be taking to make sure that the plants we're investing in now stay healthy and look fabulous? I always suggest once you've bought your plants and you get them home is to make sure they're watered well. Mm -hmm. um, using a transplant fertilizer is ideal because you're going to allow the roots to transition to the ground best. Fertilize with a transplant solution once you've planted. Make sure you have a nice well-drained soil. You may have to add some soil to your existing soil if you're right. planting right in the ground. Or using a proper container soil to plant into your pots is always important. Yeah. And then once you've done that, you get them nice and planted and give them a good water with your transplant. And then you switch over to a fertilizing, like a okay. you know, a fertilizer for blooming to encourage and push blooms all season. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, as well as in the ground, of course, there's a huge story to tell here with the collection of planters and hanging baskets. Mm -hmm. As you said, um, there are easily coordinated options here already yes, chosen for you, um, but as well as that whole sun versus shade thing and, and choosing the right plants for the right place, mm -hmm. we've got tools for that too. We do. We actually, all of our planters and hanging baskets come with tags that indicate whether they're for sun or shade, so that helps you a lot. And then we have signage in the stores that will indicate cer certain big crops, whether they're for sun or for shade, and all of the Terra Associates are trained in these products and can help you out. That's always good. Yeah. The right plant for the right place sort of gets you ahead of the game before yeah. you Yes, it's so important because it's so easy to get discouraged if you don't have the right plant for the right location and you just feel like you don't have a green thumb, but really, once if you get that right, you, you can do it. It's yeah. not so bad. No. Um, what are you looking forward to most in putting in your garden this season? There's all sorts of wonderful options to choose from. Are there some that are really singing to you, some, some really trendy things that you can't wait to get your head, hands on? Um, there are certain things for me. For me, it's color. So it's, there's, um, this year there's a black petunia. And I know it sounds kind of eerie, but there's some black <laughs> with some hot pink and things like that that are coming out this year. So I'm kind of excited about doing like a black, hot pink, and lime green combination this mm. year just as something funky. Um, the Sinetis are really cool. So that's something I'd like to try. I, I'm hearing great success stories on it, and the color shocking. So it's something I'd definitely like to do. Trend forecasting is part of what you do, and, and you're actually involved in helping to plan the crops with mm -hmm. the production team here. Yeah. Um, how have basket and, and planter trends changed over the years, and how, how have you sort of changed it to, to make sure you've got the right mix? Because it's, it's a big game of forecasting. It is a game, yeah. It's something that we really have to look into. What we're finding is that customers really do want a pop of color. So they're looking for impact at the front of their house. So they're looking for bright monochromatic colors. We're still using a lot of the, you know, the old faithfuls, the geraniums, the begonias and things like that, but we're using them in new fun ways. We're using a red geranium with red trailing things and bouncing it off of oranges or using the bright yellows together and so on. So those are things that we work really hard in picking the things to go together in the yeah. planters and then using the right planter mix to go with them, you know, having the yellow planter and so on. So for me, I'm really excited about that this year is having the, the pot to go with the, the matching hanging basket and we've really planned that out. Fantastic. So. Amy, I can't wait to get my hands on some fresh color and get out into me the too. garden. It's going to be a fantastic weekend to do so. Um, for all of you, of course, all of the fresh color that you see behind us is available at a Terra location near you. And for more tips on how to care for your annuals this season, you can visit terragreenhouses.com. Amy, thanks for joining us. No problem. Us. Thanks, Chris. More for your long weekend fun after this break on Terra at Home. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. When we first bought the house, the lawn was nothing but brown. So I called my father-in-law. You know, he's really good with the lawn. He knows exactly what to do. Well, I told him, you're Scott's turf builder. He said, well, I got this other stuff. And I told him, take it back to the store. Well, some brands have filler like sand and gravel, stuff you don't want on your lawn. Scott's turf builder is pure food. Every granule is 100% nutrition. You get what you pay for every time. You see what happens, Tim, when you listen to your father-in-law? <laughs> All food, no filler. That's the Scots Advantage.
Welcome back to Tara at Home for our Victoria Day episode. I'm joined now by Andrew Nichols from Crocs. Thanks so much for being with us, Andrew. Thanks for having me, Chris. As we're now finally getting back out into the garden, out into the outside, this guy is really familiar to us. Many people think this is a Croc, end of story, available in different colors, but the story doesn't end there. No, no, it doesn't, Chris. Actually, this is uh, probably the style that most people know us by. But as you will uh, quickly see today, a lot of the product has evolved to account for many different wearing occasions for the entire family. The styles change, but one thing doesn't, and that's the quality that people have come to expect from Crocs. What is it about this shoe that makes it so successful? I think, Chris, the thing that really started us off was the, the bright, fun color, the comfortable wearing occasions, and the easy way that people could keep care of their shoes. Mm -hmm. If they got dirty, it was a simple rinse. If it, uh, you know, there was anything that needed to be just wiped off, the kids could go and, and run amok in the garden, and it was a lot of fun for them. So, yeah. in general, it was very easy for mom and dad to look after the shoes for the kids and for themselves, and mm -hmm. that really was the basis of our initial success. So, this, this, clog now has evolved for uh, into a huge range of styles and uh, this season at Terra we've we've got a whole lot of them tell us about Crocs presence at Terra and how that's changed you know we're really excited about the partnership this year I think Terra has given a wonderful opportunity to us to expand the showcase of our product uh, as we said you know there's really a, a single product that we're known for but when you take a look at the over 250 different styles that are available from Crocs. 250? It's, it's, <laughs> uh, it's come a long way. It has. It's not the Crocs that everybody seems to know and as a result uh, there's lots of different things for for men and, and obviously for women the the range continues to expand and then for the kids it's always been a, a surefire hit for them. Definitely. Let's talk about the kids. You've got some styles behind you that are, are examples of, of Crocs for kids and I think it's it's a big exciting part of the line and it's something that kids are so drawn to. They're bright colors, they're fun. Tell us about the Crocs kids line. Absolutely. Uh, the Kids Croc Band is a style that we're bringing back again this year. A great deal of success with it last year. Obviously, um, a very cute shoe. You can see it on a yeah. lot of the different kids. It's got a little bit of that retro look with the, the rand around the outside. And we've had a great deal of success with this shoe. And what we found is that's really been given us an opportunity to extend the platform. Now you're taking a look at the little Crocs Jenna. So a little bit more of a narrow silhouette for the little girl in the household and an opportunity for them to start to tailor a look for themselves while living off of the traditional Crocs background. Then new for spring uh, 11 is the new Carly Girls Flat. I you know, love this. An absolutely cute, cute look. Uh, you'll recognize the, uh, the jelly-like look, but the difference with this shoe is the TPU upper that we use is actually very soft. So you're not going to have to worry about any of those rub marks on the little girl's ankles or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a really nice addition to whatever you know, pretty spring dress that that girl might be wearing. It's, fam fa it's fantastic. And I love the little bit of bling, a little bit of extra something special there for yep, uh, the little absolutely. girl. Catch her eye. Absolutely. Crocs for women. Um, I think <coughs> women, you know, really got on board with the clog and, uh, and wearing them out and about everywhere. But the styling has changed significantly to sort of reflect being able to bring it into all sorts of different parts of your lifestyle. It's not just for the garden. It's not just for the backyard. Crocs can now transition into everyday wear and your casual summer, summer outfits. Absolutely. One of the first steps that we actually took in, in giving mom and in giving all of the women an opportunity to wear beyond just the garden was the Patricia. Mm -hmm. This has proven to be an exceptionally uh, successful product for us. It's probably been our number one selling women's style for the last three seasons running. So again, this is gonna play a very important core part as you can see, you know, just a nice shallow heel here, but a great comfort story mm -hmm. that uh, suits all wearing occasions. Then one of the next natural evolutions was matching to the girls Carly flat. So this is the women's flat. And obviously mom and daughter would love to, you one know, for look. One for mom, one oh, for daughter. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So the same comfort story is throughout. It's a lot of fun. The TPU allows for a nice see-through silhouette, but still giving some of that nice natural spring summer color. So it's been a great addition to our 
lineup for spring 2000, 2011, and yeah. we're really excited to have it. We're excited to have it here. Um, I, I think it's a great style and something really kind of unique. It's not something that you would see on, on a foot initially and say, wow, that's a croc. I Absolutely mean, it's changed not. so much. You're so right. And Crocs for men. This is a this is a big <coughs> story because I, I don't know if the men bought into the Crocs right away as quickly as the women did. Am I wrong? No, not at all. I think <laughs> that uh, men traditionally have been the biggest holdouts. Uh, if they've ever experienced a Croc, it's probably been thanks to a gift, perhaps, yeah. <laughs> or uh, you know some other opportunity to give Dad a, a pair of shoes that are something to wear around the house. Mm -hmm. But the opportunity has really been that once they buy into the comfort store, there's a lot of different types of shoes that we can offer them. One of the shoes that's my particular favorite is the Santa Cruz. A very, very comfortable story. And when you take a look at this and you're wearing it with jeans such as I am, yeah. you just would not know that this is a croc. Never in a million years. And so the beauty of it is it's a really nice way for men to feel comfortable wearing this shoe when they're out and about in their daily you know, their daily business. Yeah. So a great opportunity there. A style that does exceptionally well at Terra has been the Yukon. So again, you know, you take some of the stylings of the traditional clog, but you dress it up with a little bit of leather, yeah. you add a, you know, an adjustable heel strap, and now you've got a shoe that can suit lots of different purposes mm -hmm. and will do very, very well on a men's foot as well. And again, with the leather edition there, it's something that sort of ups the style a little bit. You can wear it with jeans or a pair of shorts, and it doesn't look the same as a traditional clog. Very much so, very mm -hmm. much so. Uh, boots are a big story now as well. Boots sort of splashed onto the scene and now this is a, a croc that uh, you can wear in multiple situations, especially for the mud and muck of the backyard garden without the holes that, uh, that might uh, pose problems. We've got um, a boot line available this season as well. Yeah, so this is the croc band jaunt. We, are, we alluded to it before. This is sort of the line extension of the, the croc band platform. And this is a great colorful way of bringing a little bit of fun to you know, some of that rainy weather, if you will. Yeah. And we've got these in both adult and kids. And so the opportunity is for them to wear a nice easy on, easy off, type of lightweight boot for them. Yep. And it's a real natural for us because obviously the uh, weather repellent nature of Crocs is, sure. is inherent and these boots are, are a great addition to the lineup. The color story is, is a really big deal too. I mean, part of what makes Crocs, I think, so successful and so fun is the huge range of colors available in, in any given style. And the boots certainly showcase that color in a, in a big way. Yeah, absolutely. Crocs has always been known for sort of the color of the rainbow type of approach. Yeah. And when you take a look at behind me, there's a lot of different options. Whether you're looking for a more muted navy or brown, or you're looking for something a little bit more colorful like this yellow Croc Van John boot. There's a lot of options available for people, uh, colors to suit every style, uh, and styles to suit every taste. Fantastic. Andrew, thanks so much for being with us today and uh, showcasing the spring-summer line here. My pleasure, Chris. Thanks for having me. You can look forward to all of the Crocs line here at Terra and look forward to it changing throughout the seasons with new arrivals as uh, styles come and go. Coming up after the break, more from Terra at home. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Terra at Home, where we're now back in the Terra at Home kitchen with Chef Rachel. Thanks once again for always being with us, Rachel. Thank you, Chris. We're now at an, in full-on summer barbecue mode, mm -hmm. and as we get into the full swing of the season, we want to spend more and more time outside. We've got people coming over, troops to feed as we're working outdoors, and we've got a great uh, recipe for that. Mm -hmm. Today we're doing burgers. 
on the grill. Classic. So just a couple different things in these burgers. First of all, we're starting off with three different kinds of meat here. We have okay. ground beef, pork, and veal. Mm. So we're going to mix that all together for a, a, a different type of burger. Uh, some great things to go inside too, some garlic, about three or four cloves worth. Some chopped jalapenos if you like it spicy. Dijon mustard, breadcrumbs, eggs, the you know, the whole the deal usual here. The usual suspects. Yeah. And we're going to uh, make it uh, a little a little surprise for your guests. We're going to put a chunk of cheese right in the middle, so they'll never know until they bite right into it and all the cheese oozes out. That sounds fantastic. So this is about two pounds of meat here, so this is going to make quite a few burgers, but we'll just put it all into this bowl, and we want to mix everything up um, really well. Make sure that each burger gets a little bit of every kind of meat. Okay. This is something I really like about making burgers from scratch, where you can customize the meat, you can add all of your own ingredients to really give it a unique flavor. Mm -hmm. um, extra garlic, of course, uh, will make it really, really shine. So I think it's going to be, I think they're going to be delicious, and it's part of the benefit of making your own mix for sure. Right? Yeah. It's the you know, there's so much that you can do with burgers. It makes it kind of fun something fun to do because you can put any kind of toppings on it you want, put anything inside. Um, so great, great summer meal. Okay, so we've got that mixed up well. We're going to do a couple eggs. Okay. So about an egg per pound. This will help keep everything together. Yeah, the eggs are kind of like the glue of your burger, right? They just mm -hmm. sort of bind everything and make sure it all sticks. Right. Let me put those aside. And the breadcrumbs too can go in. And you can use fresh bread too if you'd like. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. But we have just regular breadcrumbs here, so we'll mix all that together. And at some point here, I'm going to have to start getting my hands dirty because uh, you really need to do that when you're making burgers. Just get your hands in there and make sure that it's all mixed up well. Definitely. So we'll just give it a quick mix for now, and then I'll get my hands in there in a bit. We'll add all this chopped garlic. Great. Wonderful. And chopped jalapenos. Now these are jalapenos that you can get in a jar at the grocery store. They're pickled jalapenos. You could yep. also use fresh if you'd like. These are quite, quite hot. Mmm, that's going to be good. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and about a tablespoon of mustard, Dijon mustard. I think it's Just always a nice touch. Just for some flavor, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to season it with my salt and pepper. All right, here we go. Simple ingredients all put together. It's going to be delicious. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, it's clean hands, of course. This is the fun part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to work everything in there so you know every burger gets a bit of all those great ingredients you're putting in. So basically, we can just sort of work that all together, make them into patties. We're going to slip that hunk of cheese right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Yeah, you can also, you know, shred up your cheese if you'd like and, and mix it all in with this mixture. Putting the chunk in the middle just is, uh, it's a little something different, a little all surprise. Right. Well, I'll help you out. I'll dive in and get my hands dirty too. We'll form these patties and we'll meet you out at the barbecue. Well, Rachel, we've made our way out to the patio and mm -hmm. now we're ready to get grilling. We've got our uh, fantastic broil king ready to go mm -hmm. and uh, it's time to get those burgers on the grill. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a beautiful barbecue. So we have this heated up. Uh, you always want to remember your, you know, your safety when you're um, getting ready to barbecue. When you're lighting it, lid open. Close the lid again, let it come to temperature. Check your propane tank. You know, make sure it's full and safe and you have all the tools that you need to uh, barbecue and then you're ready to go and then you don't have to worry about anything. You can kind of throw your, your um, dinner on there or your lunch in any case, right? And uh, entertain outside while you're, while you're cooking. So... The this. burgers have turned out really nicely. You shaped them all by hand. I did. I did. And like I said, I put a little bit of cheese in the middle of each one so you can't see it now. but. Um, when you bite into it, it'll be nice and melted. 
so I'll put those on now. This recipe that I did, I said it was about two pounds of the meat combined. Okay. Um, and that made about nine burgers. Okay. So. So enough to feed a hungry crowd, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and these are a good size burger too. So you could probably get more out of it if you make them a little smaller. So you want to get these on nice and hot. Once they're all in there, we can close the lid if we want and let it cook like that. Obviously, the temperature is going to go down a bit if we keep it open. Right. And they may take a bit longer. But you want to cook them, you know, for the same amount of time on each side. Okay. So again, you know your barbecue, um, what, how it cooks, you know, you're used to that. So you can kind of determine how long they're going to take. But I think for the most part, um, maybe six or seven minutes on each side. Okay. Um, you want to make sure that they're cooked all the way throughout. Just your basic, your basic food safety. Um, a safe temperature would be 160, I would say, no less than that. So you can um, work with a, you can use your meat thermometer when you're doing these. Yeah. And I think it's generally best practice to kind of leave them alone, let them go on one side, then flip them over to finish on the other side. Yes. And then we'll check the temperature and make sure everything's all good. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to be, you don't, you know, need fancy grill marks. You don't need to be changing them all around. <laughs> um, they're perfect just the way they are. Let them cook through. And, uh, and yeah, when you take them off the barbecue too, you put them on a plate, the temperature will come up a little bit too. So, um, you just keep your eye on that and then they, they won't be overcooked. You'll have nice, nice, juicy jalapeno cheddar cheese burgers. Perfect. I can't wait. One of the best advantages of cooking on the grill out on the patio is that you don't have to be far from your guests if you're mm -hmm. entertaining. We can cook right here and have everything we need right on site. Yes. So we're going to keep these cooking. When we come back, you'll see the finished product when we uh, get them ready to serve. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. When we first bought the house, the lawn was nothing but brown. So I called my father-in-law. You know, he's really good with the lawn. He knows exactly what to do. Well, I told him, you're Scott's turf builder. He said, well, I got this other stuff. And I told him, take it back to the store. But some brands have filler, like sand and gravel, stuff you don't want on your lawn. Scott's turf builder is pure food. Every granule is 100% nutrition. You get what you pay for every time. You see what happens, Tim, when you listen to your father-in-law? <laughs> All food, no filler. That's the Scots Advantage. Welcome back to Tara at Home, where our burgers are just about ready. They're ready to come off the grill. Yep. And Rachel, I see our surprise cheese is making a, <laughs> a debut here. It is in most of them. Some of them, it's still it's still going to be a surprise, but most of them, it's just uh, coming out there. It was too good a secret to keep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I put some buns on here too, so just to get those a little toasted. I like my buns toasted. So we ended up taking about five minutes per side for our burgers. Yeah, about five to six. Yeah, didn't take long at all. This is uh, quite a big hot barbecue though, so um, so it went a little, little faster than um, just the average barbecue that you might have at home. <laughs> and a great fun go. casual way to serve weekend fare like burgers is right straight hot off the grill, so right. guests can come on, pick the burger that best sings to them, and they're ready to serve. And Fantastic. there's yours. You want to pick yours out? Mm. Get a nice cheesy one. Yeah. There we go. Of course, Perfect. you can find the recipe for this uh, fantastic burger as well as all of Chef Rachel's recipes on TaraGreenhouses.com. Rachel, like you said, we used a mix of uh, beef, pork, and veal today. Mm -hmm. But of course, you can easily make burgers out of uh, ground soy if you've got veggies who are who are joining you, or yep. as well um, some ground turkey would make a, a great addition too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the possibilities are endless when you're experimenting with burgers. All right, so we'll serve these up with some nice green salads and hit the patio. <laughs> we hope you'll join us next week for more adventures from the kitchen and out at the grill for more.
Tara at home.